I'm Dean Safola and this is the Azure Academy. Today I wanted to start a short series on Azure governance. Now, first of all, what in the world is governance? So governance is when we implement a series of controls on people, processes, actions, resources, so that we can better craft how we want our environment to look, as well as set up the rules that everyone else has to play by, and we can know whether or not we've been successful with that. So for that conversation, we're going to have an overview today, and then we'll dig into areas of governance over the next few videos. So for this, we want to start off in our documentation, and we want to go to Architectures. In Architectures, we want to open the Azure Architecture Center, and then within there, under the Enterprise Cloud Adoption, there is the section on Governance. And this would tell you uh, some things about governance and how to implement them, as well as uh, how to do it for single teams, how to do it for multiple teams. And also under the appendix is the Azure Enterprise Scaffold. And this is the framework behind governance practices and why we do the things that we do. Now, I'm going to kind of overview this for you as we walk through things in the portal, but everything that I'm saying really comes back to this section of our documentation and you can look that over. So in the Azure portal there are many different areas that we could go to that we would implement these things but there is a new feature in the portal and that is the Quick Start Center right here at the top of Azure Services. When you click the Quick Start Center what this actually is is a playbook. Now what is a playbook? Well, it's basically a series of steps or menus that is kind of a serverless process in the cloud whereby you can accomplish a task. For example, under Create Azure Services, if we select that, we have here build a new website, build a VM, set up some storage, start an AI project, create a database, and other. So if we were to start with create a VM, we're presented with, do we want to migrate on-prem or create in Azure a Windows or Linux system? So let's create a Linux system of Red Hat, and we hit create, and it tells us a little bit about what it's going to do. And then you walk through, and now we're in the VM create experience. So it's kind of a quick way to get you to what it is that you want to do. So back in the Quick Start Center, we're going to set up a Azure environment. This is the fundamentals of governance. And it's going to bring us to this section where we can read through this detail and tell us what we're basically going to accomplish. And like I said, governance covers the areas of permissions and what it is that can be done, where, how, and to what degree. And then also the organization of resources through policies and practices. So it's going to describe all these things for you, talk about how to, to go to a resource group, set up access control for a particular user. So if you hit the go to resource group button, you're brought into a resource group where you can select that. We'll select the Azure Academy, then you go to Access Control, and then those permissions that are here are in three different areas. And looking back at the Quick Start Center, we see that those are in the Reader role, the Contributor role, and the Owner role. And then there's Custom roles, which could be a combination of anything. And those can be applied at the subscription level, resource group level, or the individual resource level. And same thing here, you can go to the subscription, go to Access Control, and you can set that up as well. Okay, and this would then flow down to all resource groups in your subscription, so it just depends where and how you want to access and, and set up what kind of permissions. Then in step three, this gets into some of the concepts around resource control, uh, specifically that everything starts off in this hierarchy concept. So this talks about how to organize your Azure resources. Everything now starts with this management group concept. So management groups can be found under all services and management groups. And a management group is that topmost level of control that you can have in an Azure environment. Now, management groups themselves can be nested. So I have here a management group inside, and there's two at this level. Then you could go further, and you could even create more. So I'll create a new management group here, and we'll call this uh, test123, and we'll give it the name of this test. And we'll hit save and there you go we have now created a new management group which is nested underneath 
Okay, so we have our management group here of AA management, then in there, test management one, test management two, which has another management group in it. So why would you want to do any of this? Well, it's because inside these management groups, we can have subscriptions. So you can have multiple subscriptions within a management group, and therefore you can set up a hierarchy like was shown here. One management group, in this case, has two subscriptions in it. Those subscriptions each have their own resource groups, X number, and then each one of those has their own resources. So you could use this as a way to enforce standards, policies, etc., down onto all of your subscriptions. So picture it this way, your company X. You have a single management group and you have two subscriptions, dev and prod. And then you want to have resource groups for those. Here's your centralized application hub for prod. Here's your hub for dev. And you've got another one for sandbox. Inside these resource groups, you have resources. There you go. And you want to have policy in place. And you want to manage your policies centrally. You want to manage your standards, your naming tags, uh, your cost billing tags. And you want to manage them from the top down so that you can control them in one place instead of having to set some here and set some there and set some here and have different ones over here. Okay? That way you can establish all of your permissions from top down policies from top down and of course you can have differences added at each level so you could have three policies from top down on resource tagging and then additionally to those three policies that are now present at all levels down the chain you can have policies in this subscription because it's dev that says you're only allowed to use vm sizes one two and three but in prod you're allowed to use one two three four five and six and then your resource groups, these are only allowed to be provisioned into these two locations for dev, but six locations for prod. And then same thing at the resource level. So you can scope all of your things that you need appropriately. And you can go through the portal here to set up your management groups, subscriptions, nest subscriptions within the management groups, and then deal with your resource groups and all of their functions appropriately. Then we talk about some naming standards. Now, naming in the cloud is something that we haven't really talked about, but there are uh, very important things about naming because names in the cloud can tell you about a resource. They can tell you where it is, what it is, and particular data about that resource. Is it dev? Is it prod? Is it a database server? Is it Windows? Is it Linux? Is it in the East US? Is it in China? Those kind of things. Okay. Now, there are some naming standards that are listed here just so you can get an idea of them. Some of the names are somewhat unique as we've seen in the past. For example, a storage account can only use lowercase characters and no special symbols. Okay, so this is helping you to devise a naming standard that'll work with your organization's current naming standard. Hopefully you have one. And that way, every resource gets a name appropriate so that you don't have one server named Donald Duck and another one named Mini and you have no idea what's on them, where they are, or what they're for. Then we come into tags. Now, tags are metadata, and tags also use a key value pair. And that key value pair could be literally anything. And you could have one that's department, and the value is central IT. Or a cost code would be a name, and then the actual cost of HC138527 could be the code. That way you know who's being charged for that resource. Some stuff with automation, some stuff related to billing, so that we know who is responsible for these things. So going to our resource groups here, we can go to the Azure Academy, go to tags, and currently we don't have a tag, but I can add a tag from any tag that I've used anywhere else in my environment. So I could go to, uh, let's say, application, and I could say that this is Azure Learning. Now I've added a tag to my resource group, and it's that simple, and I could do it through automation just as easily as I could right here. Now, after that, we have governance, security, and compliance. Now this is where we get into Azure policies, which will be a separate video in this series. And then the Azure Security Center, also a separate video. And these are PaaS services in the cloud that you can use to manage your environment.
okay policies would be things like you can only deploy resources to the east u.s region or there would be things like you can only deploy vms of x size now security center additionally is where you're going to see best practices and recommendations from microsoft because we've seen these thousands and thousands of subscriptions in use we've seen patterns that work patterns that have more problems as well as recommendations for heightened security and efficiency so you'll find those inside the security center and we'll look at those in a later video and finally in the monitoring and reporting section we have things related to the azure monitor service which all logging and reporting flows through azure monitor now the azure service health which relates to azure as a whole and we'll go to service health here okay and this is where we show any issues that have happened in the last several days and if there are root cause analysis that are available and we make these things public so that you can know that we're not hiding anything as well as that we found issues that maybe you've been struggling with and we've got resolutions to them okay and those issues can be seen here across every region I've only got some regions selected so let me go ahead and select all the regions and I've got multiple subscriptions and we'll only feed you the information related to your stuff okay then there is things around planned maintenance that we have and there's currently nothing scheduled and then there are health advisories and I've got one right now and then you can read through these things and look at what's going on this is related to the kubernetes service uh, which I'm not currently using so I'm not concerned about that at the moment okay so that's the health service then there is the Azure advisor also another uh, topic that we'll cover and you can see I've got some of these things pinned here like this is Azure policy this is the security center and then this is the Azure Advisor and Azure Advisor and Security Center kind of work hand in hand to present you different recommendations for your environment you can choose to apply them or not totally up to you and then through all of this planning together here that's in this quick start center you will have a governance framework in place that will then allow you to proceed with setting up your workloads and your environment in a planned well thought out manner that will allow you to go and continue and be successful in the cloud this has been a quick overview of Azure governance. In our next video, we'll start tackling some of these areas and walk through the process of setting up some good governance practices in our Azure environment. Give a like on our video here if it was good. If it was not good, then hit that thumbs down. Make sure you subscribe and hit our notification icon so that you can find out when our new videos are online, which is roughly about once a week. And please comment, uh, let us know what you'd be interested in, and we'll do that uh, next time. Happy learning.